Welcome to Dreamland, a kingdom famous for peace and quiet. It's the perfect little land, if you like that sort of thing. Lately, there have been rumors of a caped sorcerer going around turning people into yarn. That's right, yarn. One day, Kirby saw his favorite food, a bright red tomato, on top of a bush. Down the hatch. But when Kirby tried to eat it, a caped sorcerer appeared. My name is... Hey, what are you doing? Stop that! No, that's my magic metamato. Kirby gulped the metamato right down. Just then, a white sock around the sorcerer's neck began to glow. Then it sucked Kirby up. This grass feels funny, Kirby thought. It feels like pants. And to Kirby's surprise, he saw that his entire body was made out of yarn. Then he saw a yarn monster chasing a blue yarn boy. Somebody help me! Kirby tried to swallow the monster up. But the air went right through his body. Kirby wondered what he should do. Suddenly, Kirby transformed into a car. He drove away with the boy and left the monster behind to eat his dust. Apparently, that strange metamato gave Kirby the power to seamlessly transform into a car and who knows what else. Thanks for saving me. What's that? You say you're from another world? Whoa, wow. Welcome to Patchland. You just stick with me and I'll show you the ropes. Uh, it's beginning. This is my castle, so feel free to look around as much as you want. And we gotta save. What's good and what's up guys? It's Steve Jet here with Let's Play Kirby's Epic Puns. No, but welcome to Let's Play Kirby's Epic Yarn. Uh, admittedly, this wasn't actually going to be a Let's Play to follow after Paper Mario, but uh, in the past week, I was going through some stuff, and uh, I, I sat down and played this game, and I thought, why not? I enjoyed it. Let's go ahead and get started. Maybe I was going to say that for the finale, but uh, let's say it now. Why not get the feels out of the way? So, yes, welcome to Kirby's Epic Yarn. Uh, this is the tutorial stage telling us how to jump. We press 2. Uh, if you played New Super Mario Bros. Wii, then you should have some idea about how this plays. Uh, we can pick stuff up with uh, one that actually tells you to do that. Sorry, well, yeah, it doesn't want all these. Uh, this tells you you can pick things up if you press and hold the button, and then with, uh... Actually, I want that. Where's that wall do yet? Oh, hey! Come here, you. So yeah, with one, we can uh, destroy things, or we can pick them up, and we can throw it with the one button. Uh, you see, we have we're picking up beads here. Beads are currency, these small ones are basically ones, and uh, as they uh, grow, I don't think uh, the color uh, decides, like, uh, no, I don't think the colors decide the amount, I think it's the size, like those uh, yellows right there, they're slightly bigger than what we've been picking up. And we have a chest right here. These type of chests will uh, hold what is a furniture item. There's at least two furniture items per stage, and then another collectible we'll be getting into later. So let's go ahead and just keep on going up. Got some more beads over here. Uh, you can see at the very top, it, uh, we have a bead counter. Press and hold two here, and we can just float on down. But yeah, at the top, we can see bronze, silver, and then there's one more rank if we can get it, which I'm sure we will. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this apart. Those uh, blue things, there's a lot to explain, so sorry if I'm like running from thing to thing. Those, uh, those whatever they're called. Uh, if you pull them out like this right here, we can just grab onto, uh, the thing we pulled, the blue ones, they, uh, when they break, they're permanent, uh, that's how it's gonna be forever. And then there's, um, there's another type that we'll get into later. But yeah, we can see, there's a ranking up there about, uh, it's the different metals. Uh, you wanna go for gold, uh, it doesn't really net you, t uh, too much if memory serves, but it's just something to go for. And right here it tells you about turning it to a car, and here we go. 
Uh, here's the last thing. So there's two furniture items at every stage, as well as a CD. And right here at the end, we have a bell. Uh, if you've been picking up those things that have stars on them, this will uh, net you goodies uh, at the end. The two will get you some mount, the three will get you a uh, moderate mount, and the five is what you always want to aim for. So like, if you don't have gold, but you're, you uh, need a little bit, it will get you there. So the best way to get the five is to wait for it to go around like that. Whatever you're going for, if you grab it, ah, uh, that's going to have a lot too. The five is very cheapy, uh, cheeky to try and get. But like, wait until something that's very top, and then go right at it. And this is our little stage clear uh, menu. You can see it tells you, like, it shows your medals, how many beads you got, your streak, which is uh, how many beads you collect until you take damage, and then the treasures, which again, two front tries and a CD. Thanks for your help, the blue yarn boy said. Not that I needed it. I'm Prince Fluff. Ever since Yin Yarn the Sorcerer ripped Patchland into seven pieces, you just can't go anywhere without running into these horrible... But Fluff was interrupted when they were attacked by a huge three-eyed blob of yarn. Ew, gross, stop it! But before the blob could eat Prince Fluff, Kirby transformed and smashed it to smithereens in a most spectacular fashion. Among the little blob bits, there was a shimmering piece of spiraling yarn. That's it. That's the magic yarn, Fluff exclaimed. This was what Prince Fluff had been looking for. Yin Yarn had stolen the magic yarn from Patchland. The yarn weaved its way into the fabric of the kingdom and stitched two pieces of patchland together. What about the other pieces? I've got to find the rest of them. Kirby, always happy to help, decided to help his friend recover the missing pieces. And the two began their journey to stitch patchland back together. This game has too many puns for me to handle. And so that transforms and lets us go to Grassland, which we'll be heading to momentarily. Saving in progress, let's do a little exploring round. Uh, we can't go here yet, this is question mark, question mark, question mark. If we jump over here, there's some bells here. And we have uh, Patch Plaza. I want to take a moment to talk about this real quick, uh, just simply because it's right here. Uh, Patch Plaza is everything that will lead towards 100%. Uh, you have your cast, this is all the characters in the game. Uh, stuff is like furniture, uh, fabric, we'll worry about that later, metals is uh, the stages, make sure you get, um, you know, uh, gold and whatnot, uh, tunes are the CDs you pick up, and flicks, these are the cutscenes, as you can see, we're already 22% done, so we're uh, one-fifth of the way there, there's admittedly not too many cutscenes in this game, so Quilty Square, as you saw the name was called, is sort of your hub of the, uh, of this game. Uh, we have two little things here that we'll come back and worry about later. Uh, but we have this one guy here. Let's go see what he wants. This man with the most spectacular mustache. Prince Fluff, what an uh, unexpected surprise. And who might you be your friend be? Lord Kirby, you say? He's visiting us from another world, you say? How exciting. My name is Dong Wool. I hate this game. <laughs> and it is my pleasure to make your acquaintance. Lord Kirby has helped you save our beautiful patch land? Well, that's just wonderful. I am manager of Quilty uh, Court here. Please uh, come aside for a moment. I insist. So this is mandatory. You do need to do it. Which is why I took a moment to explain the uh, Patch Plaza. Admittedly, there's like a you know that's a part for course of starting game cutscenes and tutorials and random things. So welcome to your home. Uh, well, I suppose it doesn't look like much yet, but I will be honored to have one of uh, Prince Pluff guests staying here. Pluff. And so he gives us a furniture item, which is a chair. A proper home must be furnished, uh, must be properly furnished. We'll accept this as a gift from me. We're free to furnish your uh, new place in whatever way you desire. We'll discuss the rent later. You don't actually pay rent. Go ahead and enjoy space. If you have any questions, I'll be around. Now, if you excuse me, I think I hear one, uh, one of my other tenants walking around outside. 
there's a lot to do with the apartments, and I'll be dis uh, discussing that in a bonus video. Right here, though, is talking about how to change your layouts. Uh, if you... Let's go ahead and do this. Press A, and we can point the TV here. And then it goes over uh, the different menus. You have place, you have uh, put away. So places, you grab the furniture item, put over here. Uh, put away, you grab that furniture item you don't want and put it down here. Copy allows you to duplicate, it's self-explanatory. Uh, reholster, I don't know too much about actually, let's see what it says. You can also reholster some uh, furniture items. Or, yeah, so first one, with fabrics you found. Okay, so this allows you, like, let's say you have a type of fabric you really like. Fabric something we'll get later. Uh, go ahead and just, uh, connect the two together, and boom, done. Okay, so, I actually don't want, don't want to do that. We have wallpaper, we don't have any of these yet. Uh, and that's basically it. Uh, I'll, like I said, I'll go over depth, uh, about this later. So for now, let's just go ahead and leave. Off we go. Now, Prince Fluff is like the Vegeta of this game. I mean, he just has the eyebrows for it. Uh, which leads me to talk about this real fast. Uh, since we are going to uh, Flower gar uh, Garden, Fl uh, Fountain Gardens. That's the name of it. Uh, if you press A, yeah, there we go. Press A in uh, each world. You can see, I'm going to do this for, uh, if I remember, I'm going to do it for the start of every world. You can see how the uh, area looks, the stages. Uh, so there's usually like four stages and then a boss and then two bonus stages. But let's go ahead and get an actual stage going. Uh, we've been uh, discussing tutorials and watching cutscenes with really bad puns. So let's go ahead and get right into it. And I want to take this moment to talk about Prince Fluff because this is one of the things I do know about the game. This game didn't start off as uh, a Kirby game. It started off as a standalone game with Prince Fluff as the main character. Uh, they didn't think it would do that well or something of the sort. Uh, so they decided to just throw Kirby into it and have Prince Fluff be the uh, be the second player. This monkey here, he would just infinitely throw bees. Wait, give me that giant one, actually. All right, so I'm gonna leave him alone. You can grab them, but there's not much to it. I'm on my way, I'm on my way, monkey. So you have these uh, Waddle Dees just sitting here sleeping. I'm gonna ignore that guy for now. Like I said, the blue, uh, the blue uh, buttons, I couldn't think of the word. Blue buttons are permanent. Uh, that's another type that is not, it's only temporary. So let's go ahead. You don't wanna pu pull this just yet. This has screwed me over multiple times. You wanna come grab this star, very useful. The fish down there don't, uh, don't harm you. And uh, this leads to something I want to mention. You can get hurt in this game, uh, much like in most Kirby games. However, you cannot die, and that actually uh, pissed off a lot of people at first. They thought the game was far too easy uh, due to having no penalty for death, really. You can fall down pits, and um, you'll have this one little angel that they never say who she is. I mean, they say her name, but uh, like she's not relevant. This is the other type of uh, button I was talking about, the red one where it's only temporary. There we go. Okay, no, you can't grab him like that. But you could. So go ahead and do that. And we have some beads on this tree. We can go ahead and swing back and forth and knock them off. Oh, yeah, pick up some of these before they despawn. Look at that. Excuse me, sir. I'm gonna grab a few more of these. Oh, hey, if you get all of them, you get a star. Nice. Look at that. Vroom. Okay. <laughs> I have fun with me alone. Alright, so, uh, real quick, just to mention it, uh, because, I, I don't know, uh, there's not much to mention in this stage. It's a pretty self-explanatory first stage. You run around, you do things, etc. So, 100%, uh, because that is a pretty massive deal in this game. What are we going for? It's sort of. Uh... There's some stuff in Quilty Square that I want to go over, but as for, like, actually doing it, now nah, I'm good. Here's where the first furniture item is. This is the fountain. Uh, for the furniture items and the CDs, I will be going for all of them. Uh, the medals, too. Uh, let me go over this real quick before I continue talking about Quilty Square. Uh, so, with the furniture items and the medals, uh, if I miss one of them, uh, like, if I don't get gold rank, uh, or if I miss the, like, a certain furniture. Uh, uh, unless I, uh, uh saw 
the furniture item that I'll just go back for it at the end of uh, the world. Ah, here's the second one. Uh, that's a CD. So, press plus. Oh, I have everything. Wait, when did I get the uh, table? <laughs> okay, or the chair, whatever that is. But yeah, for the most part, if I see the furniture item, then I will uh, now go back for it. But if I didn't, like I just straight up bypassed it, which will probably happen a few times. Uh, if that happens, then I'm just not gonna worry. Uh, those uh, star things, though, I... Oh, wait. That's right, you can't. You have to jump down. But the star things, I'm not gonna worry too much about, because they're not actually uh, necess or, uh, necessary for my percent. Uh, they help you get, you know, uh, the... The, like, gold ranks and stuff like that, but... Uh, they're, like, they're not important collectibles at all. I love that fish down there, because you can't even get to them. Oh, I okay, I know it's coming up at the end of the stage. I got some wildies there, I'm gonna leave them alone, but I'm gonna take their heart. And this is the first of the transformation powers, and this is actually a really cool one. This is the tank, you control it. Uh, with the D-pad, you still move, that's how you've been moving. You can tilt it to aim, and by pressing 1, you can just fire a bunch of missiles. Th admittedly, some of these powers are really cool, like this one's awesome, just to go around and run face. If you have a second player who's playing as Prince Bluff, uh, they will be controlling. There's an uh, arm attachment that will now have. If they uh, waggle the Wii mode or they. Um, I forget. I don't know how to use it. I haven't played this game with two player. But I know if they like shake the Wii mode or waggle or something like that, uh, you can swing the arm around and just wreck face. So there's a lot of cool like iterations uh, with second player. The missiles, of course, will hurt you. And I want to try to keep that uh, 265 streak. There's a missile about to come towards me. There we go. Ah, oh, I lost my streak. Yeah, so if you get not oh, you some of stupid wild deep. Luckily I still have my gold rank. Now, like I said, there's plenty of transformations. I think there's five in total. I might be wrong. But we're at the end of the stage, so let's go ahead and that should hopefully do it. I think that's too early. Yeah, that's too early. And there we go. Okay, so, uh, oops. At the end of each stage, it doesn't matter if you get gold rank, silver rank, or anything. At, well, it does matter, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, at the end of every normal stage, you'll get a patch that will allow you to open up the next area. Something fun to do is if you stand way over here and go, Hoo Sometimes it'll fly all the way across the screen, it would just... It's pretty impressive how far Kirby can throw. Admittedly, I do like uh, a lot of these animations uh, for opening up the new worlds. It's super cool that instead of just, okay, you beat this one, now go over here, now go over here. It, it, it adds a bit of personality. That's one thing I do like about this game. There's a ton of personality in it. So, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and end off right here. We got through the opening uh, cinematics as well as the first two stages. Well, the first stage and the tutorial stage. Also, I keep, I wanted to uh, bring it up, but I like the fact that, uh, when bringing the two worlds together here. I like the fact that Kirby technically beat the first boss in a cutscene. That... Okay, I didn't think the water go that high, but... Yeah, so next time... We'll be entering Flower Fields. And I swear that's, uh... No, I'm thinking of Paper Mario. I was gonna say, I swear that's already a stage in a Kirby game or something. But no, we'll be entering Flower Fields and, uh... Hopefully getting closer to, uh... Finding the next, uh... Magic Yarn String thing, whatever they're called. So until then, I will see you all next time.